Hello guys and welcome to part two of making this pencil sharpening animation in Blender 2.93. So if you haven't already seen part one, I'll put a link to that in the description below. And um, like I said, this is not about making a super realistic pencil sharpening animation. There's a lot of things that aren't quite accurate about this, but it's more just exploring the concept. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And as always, the blend files will be available on my Patreon, which you can check in the description below. And it also really helps support the channel. So um, let's get started. So one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do is just go into the internet and download yourself a wooden, seamless wooden texture. So, um, you know, you could do it on Google or go to Texture Haven or whatever. Just download one, just make sure it's seamless and put it on your desktop. I've already gone ahead and done that. So what you wanna do as well is go to HDRI Haven, which is free and you don't even need an account. And you can just go to the HDRIs, look at the different HDRI files and just download whichever one and put it on your desktop. So go ahead and do that, super easy to do. And once you've done that, we're just gonna go back into our scene file from earlier and let's start working on it. So first of all, go to our render settings. We're gonna make sure the engine is EV. We're gonna make sure ambient inclusion is enabled and also screen space reflections. For now, that's all we're gonna worry about. Then we're gonna go Shift A and we're gonna just add in our first light, which is gonna be a point light. And we're gonna go G to move it up. And let's go increase the radius and increase the power a little bit. Hit Z and go into rendered view so you can see what it looks like. So move it back behind the sharpener and the pencil. Just create a bit of rim lighting here and then go Shift D and move it over like this. And you can see here we're getting this nice rim lighting at the back. And then Shift D, move up another one, just till we get some nice rim lighting going on. So just do it to taste until you like it. And then we're gonna to go to our um, world settings, click on the little color tab here and go to environment texture. And then just go and get the HDRI that I mentioned earlier. So go to hdrihaven.com and you can download whichever one you want. So I'm gonna go open, go to your desktop and I'm just gonna get the one that I downloaded. So I'm gonna select it and I go open image. And if it's too bright, simply come to the strength here under the world settings and make it smaller. So I'm gonna make mine 0.3 and that looks pretty good. And the HRI lighting looks a lot more realistic and it really just adds to a scene. At any point, you can come here to your render settings and adjust some of these settings with the ambient occlusion size and things like that. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as is and I'm gonna select the actual sharpener. I'm gonna give that a new material and call it metal because in the first part, we already added materials when we were modeling to the pencil and things, but we haven't added a metal material yet to the sharpener. So select the sharpener here and give it a metal material, and then we're gonna to go to our shading workspace. You gotta make sure over here you go back into rendered. We have the sharpener selected, we have our metal texture, texture here, material here, and we're gonna start editing that material. So let's start by going Shift A, search, typing in noise. We're gonna get a noise texture. And then we're gonna go um, Shift A, search, get a mapping node. You can do this with the Node Wrangler as well if you want, um, but I'm not gonna do that because some people get confused every time I use the Node Wrangler. So I'm just gonna manually search, putting the mapping node here. Then I'm gonna quickly go Shift A, search, and just type in, so just type in texture coordinate and get a texture coordinate. And then take the object and plug it into the vector here at the top. So with these nodes here all plugged in there, we can take the color and we need to plug that into the um, base of the principal shader. Actually, let's take the factor. So plug the factor into the base of the principal shader. Then we can go Shift A, search and type in color and get a color ramp and place it on top of here. And this is bring this value slider for the white down a little bit to about here. And let's just make it a little bit um, darker on the value slider here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come and make the scale here 14. And we're gonna come here and make the Z value 18. And we're gonna make the X value four, like so. And now we're also gonna come here to the principal shader and increase the metallic slider all the way up to one. And now we're gonna come and bring the roughness down a bit as well, to about there. And another thing you can do is go Shift A, search, and get a bump node. Select the bump node, and then we're gonna take the color from the ramp and plug it into the height map of the bump. 
Now let's make the strength 0.2 and let's plug the normal into the normal of the principal shader and let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now all we have to do is just bring that strength down just a little bit. Just adds a little bit of um, bump to it, which makes it look a little bit better. So come here to the slider. Let's maybe make that color just a bit darker. And there we have it. So now we can select the blade. And let's give the blade, go to our materials, go to the drop down and give it that metal texture. And then give this top part here that metal texture material as well and now you can see we have that and now we're going to just select our world background i'm going to go new or the not the world background but the floor and with that floor material in fact this is called floor so we know what we're dealing with and let's just make that a little bit darker like this and that looks a bit better and bring down the roughness a bit to make it a bit more reflective and now we can just um in fact let's just come here and just drag up another if you just hover in the corner here you can drag up another little window and just come to the drop down and make that a timeline so now if we drag through here we can just see our pencil so let's just select our pencil and let's start with the first material so let's select the pencil skin that we created earlier and let's just make that like a dark kind of yellow almost make sure it's really saturated and bring down that roughness a little bit and then we're going to just go to our wood material and this is go shift a search and get an image texture and let's plug the color into the base color of the principal go open and then i'm just going to get the one that i downloaded so whichever one you downloaded you can use that so i'm just going to get a seamless wood texture i'm going to go ahead and open that and then i'm just going to make the instead of flat i'm going to put it on box and then you can leave it as it is, but I'm just going to also go shift A, search, and just get a texture coordinate. And so just type in texture coordinate, and then shift A, search, and get a mapping node. And just plug the generated into the top vector here, and then take the vector and plug it into the vector of the image texture, and that looks all right. And now we can just select the lead, um, shader here and we're simply going to make that darker and we're going to just bring down the roughness a little bit and make it look slightly metallic almost like that and then for now let's just see what it looks like so let's just quickly drag for animation and let's just see what the shaving looks like when it comes out so the shaving one of the things here it looks too um, perfect here so what we're going to do is we're going to break it up a little bit so what we're going to do is we're going to go shift a search we're going to get a mix we're going to get a mix shader place it over here we're going to plug the principled into the top socket and then we're going to go shift a search and get a transparent so type in transparent and we're going to plug that into the bottom socket and then we're going to plug the shader into the surface of the material output and then we're going to give them a mix so let's go shift a search and get a noise texture in fact Let's just reuse, this is select the metal eraser here and just select this here. Let's just select the, the color ramp and the noise texture and the mapping and the texture coordinate, these four. Right click to copy and then select the pencil shaving. Just go to that lead material and let's just right click in here and just paste it. Move it over by hitting G and now let's just simply plug the color into the factor of the mix shader to mix it and what we're going to do here is we're going to come and just make the gray color here a lighter value and then just drag these two sliders closer to each other like so and then we're going to come over here to the texture coordinate instead of having it on object we're going to make it generated and we're just going to come down here to the scale and on the x we're going to make it nine and on the Z, we're gonna make it one. So it's gonna be nine and then one, one, like that. And at the moment, you're not seeing the transparency because you actually need to go over to your material, the lead material, and go under the settings. And you gotta enable screen space reflections. And you're gonna make the blend mode alpha blend. And now you can see it's working. So that's more what we had in mind. So now let's go back to our layout. We're gonna select our camera. And we're gonna to go to our camera settings, enable depth of field, come to the drop down, select the eyedropper, and we're gonna select the sharpener. 
And I'm going to bring this f-stop value way down just to create some nice soft focus here. And now if we drag through, you can see us that pencil shaving is coming up. It's out of focus and the background's out of focus. And that looks a lot better. So um, spend as much time as you want working on the materials. Like I said, this is more just as a little um, study on how to do this. It's not very realistic and you could do it a lot better if you gave it more time. I'm just keeping it um, very simple. So you can adjust the, the background and stuff as much as you want. Work on things a little bit more. Um, try some different settings with the sliders, uh, whatever you want to do. But I'm just going to keep it at this for now. And um, yeah, so if you want to render this out as a final animation, all you have to do is go to your output settings and select under your output here at the folder. Select anywhere in the computer, and then you can go to File Format, make it FFmpeg. You can go to the encoding, and you can make the container an MP4, and always make sure to save it. And then you simply just have to go to Render and render out the final animation to wherever you select it here on the output. But that's, that's been part two of how to make this um, little animation. And um, as you can see here, this is my original. Um, but yeah, spend as much time as you want. Make it as realistic as you want. Um, polish it up as much as you want. But I will be making these blend files available on my Patreon. You can check that out in the description below. So thank you guys for watching.